A really great exercise that we can learn a lot from is to photograph a black and a white card out in the garden on a bright day and then look at the results on our computer. I have completed this exercise for real so let me take you through the results on screen. And although I'm using computer graphics to display these results, the data does come from a real life test, one that you could very easily repeat. I set the camera to 400 ISO and selected the semi-automatic aperture priority setting, but in fact it didn't really matter what setting or ISO I used. Even a manual setting would give the results you're about to see here. We selected an aperture of 5.6 and allowed the camera to determine the shutter speed for us via the aperture priority setting. The camera chose a shutter speed of 5 hundredths of a second along with the 5.6 we selected for the aperture. So we took the shot and opened the image up on our computer. And look what we found. So what's gone wrong here? Well, nothing really. The camera has seen a pure white card and it's just using that 18% grey calibration to set the exposure. But the exposure is clearly wrong in this case because the camera is a dumb machine that cannot tell the difference between black and white. We have another classic example of underexposure and this is another graphic way to show there are times when we need to step in and compensate for the exposure the camera wants to give. So let's do that exposure compensation and what do we find? Well to bring our grey underexposed card back to pure white on our computer we needed to increase the exposure to complete stops. So looking at what we have here, we've had to double the exposure by slowing the shutter speed first from a 5 hundredths of a second to 2 fiftieth of a second, and then we've had to double the exposure again when we selected 125th of a second. But now we have the white card recorded as white. Now let's take a look at the same thing with the black card where the camera selected a thirtieth of a second as the shutter speed remaining with an aperture of f5.6. And what do we get? We get the very same mid-grey we saw with the white card and also in our earlier video. So what's happened here? Well the camera has seen a very dark subject i.e. black and it's used its 18% calibration once again to set the exposure. But the exposure is clearly wrong because the camera is a dumb machine and it cannot tell the difference between black and white. So what is it we need to do here to get our overexposed grey card to record as black? We need to reduce the exposure by two stops. So again, like the white card, what we've effectively done, but in the opposite direction, is we've speeded up the shutter speed from a 30th of a second to a 60th, and then once again from a 60th to a 125th. Now we have our black card recording as black. Now look at the correct exposure to record our white card as white, and also the black card to record as black, they're exactly the same. So why does all this happen? Because the camera is a dumb machine. It's not aware that we're shooting both a black and a white card. Now if we change these two cards for real images we would see a similar result and in fact we did see a similar result in the previous video. I often say Consider shooting a white cat in the snow or a black cat in a dark corner. The results would be much the same as in our experiment here. 
Now if we sit and look at the results of this little experiment here, there should really be no mystery because both cards are lit by exactly the same light source. The light falling on the subject is identical. So the exposure for both of the cards should be the same and in fact we've proved that with our experiment. Now the main reason that our camera gets fooled so easily is because our camera's light meter reads reflected light from the scene. So when we're looking at a black card or a dark scene, the camera thinks it needs more exposure than it does. And of course the reverse is true if we're pointing our camera at an overly bright subject. Now there is another way we can measure light, which is called an incident light meter reading. This is where we record the light falling on the subject rather than the light being reflected from it as in our black and white card experiment. At some time, maybe on TV or in a film, you must have seen a photographer walking up to perhaps a wedding group and holding up a light meter. Now what they were doing is taking an incident light reading, light falling onto their subject, not reflected from it. Now this avoids any issues where the white dresses of the bride or the dark suits of the groom and the party would cause bad exposure for the same reasons we've shown in our experiment. Now of course there will be varying degrees of these issues depending on the subject we frame up on and the lighting conditions and the contrast range at the time. And we've seen examples of those with this image and this one. Now when we look again at the results of our experiment here, what can sometimes give us a little bit of a mental block is that when we view a photograph of a black card or one taken in a dark rainforest scene, logic suggests we want more light, not less. After all, don't we use flash at times to illuminate dark scenes? And when we're viewing a bright scene, or in our case here, a white card, our brain seems to suggest that we need less light, not more. But what we have to keep in mind is that we're just compensating for the 18% standard exposure that our camera wants to give. I'm going to include this graphic with the download so that you can bring this on screen and take another look should you need to.